Hello, hello, I'm Tracy Pierce. Thanks for joining me for this Live with the Animals video series. So this series was really born out of what was happening here in the United States in March of 2020. That's when stuff with the coronavirus started to really hit, places started to go into lockdown. And I really became curious about what all the animals thought about this, both the domestic animals who their owners are staying home much more than normal, and also the wild animals who you know, humans were much less out in their space. So that's how this series was born. And really here we are in August now. And my animal friends have continued to encourage me to keep chatting with them, to keep hosting these video series. So um, any of you who have questions for them, a lot of them just have wisdom they wanna share. A lot of how I'm getting these animal interviewees, if you will, is, I'm walking outside and just holding the question like, is there, are there any animals who would like to share their wisdom with the world? If there are, please present yourself for a photograph. And there's just been a lot of animals come forward. So looks like we have some people joining us on Zoom and on Facebook. And if you'd like to get in on this conversation with the spider, how to do that is if you're on Zoom, there should be a on the bottom of your bar there, a little button that says chat. Just click on that, type in your question. Or if you're joining me live on Facebook, just type your question into the comment section. All right, so our guest animal today is a spider. Now, I really, really tried to look up what kind of spider this is. I was having a hard time getting a really clear shot of it. But this is a pretty common spider you see here in Colorado, indoors. Uh, I've seen them multiple places I've lived here, so they're, they're pretty common. I'm fairly certain they're not poisonous. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure what species of spider this is. But I'm just going to go ahead and get quiet and start tuning into the spider and see what it might like to share with us today. So the spider is uh, telling me it kind of got the uh, short end of the stick in this whole situation. Um, unfortunately, like maybe an hour after I took this picture, my husband came home and I was originally going to take the spider outside, but uh, my husband smushed the spider. It's like, yeah, that was kind of a bummer. I wanted to talk to you and then <laughs> got sent to my next life. Okay, yeah, I, I felt kind of bad about that too. Um, I generally try to take spiders outside if I can. How do you feel about that? Like, do you feel like that's a better um, method for spiders is for the humans to take them outside or can some spiders not live outside? Yeah, so this spider is telling me, well, some, some spiders do live outside. His particular breed is saying it doesn't live outside as well. So as soon as it gets outside, it does try to find an inside place to um, nest and, you know, have its babies or grow up or catch insects, etc. It does prefer to be inside. It's like, well, but maybe next time it would go into the neighbor's <laughs> house instead of, instead of ours. Um, okay, yeah, you might still get smushed that way, but. So I felt like there was something, you know, maybe more than one some things that you really wanted to share some spider wisdom with us today. Um, what would you like for us to know about you or spiders in general, or just what would you like to share with us today? Showing me the, the beauty of its web. Showing me um, this web with the, the sunshine kind of hitting it at a particular angle. It's very kind of magical. Showing how each of us humans, we have our own webs that we weave. Like our connections. Um, it, so it's showing how there's 
you know, on a web, there's these multiple intersections where the threads come together. And it, it's like almost little, every little intersection in the web is somebody or something that we as individuals, humans know it's part of our, it's part of our web. And it's showing the interconnectedness of that and how that, um, like all these different experiences and people and things connect into this big web of who we are um, and our personality parts in this, in this life. Yeah, so it's, show, it's showing like um, whatever our our hangups, if you will, you know, some traditions might call this samskaras or blocks or karma that we came into this life with, showing how it's almost like each individual has a particular vibration that it's attracting certain things to it. And because the web is sticky, it like, it, it, it holds those things. We really attract in, um, a lot of what we came in with in, in this life, whatever our karma or um, burdens from past life, if, lives, if you will, that we bring with us. Okay, does it, does it seem like it might be possible to um, change that? Or, you know, like I think of people who, and I certainly have been in this position myself, at points where I'm just attracting like all the wrong stuff. And, you know, I can tell that it is part of my karma or things I'm bringing into this life. Like, do you have any advice for those of us who are maybe attracting the wrong things, how to change that? It can be a quite slow process. Uh, the spider is showing there's this certain level of unraveling like the web that our individual webs that we have can be very sticky. Um, the spider is saying though, like different individuals have different levels of stickiness to their web. Um, so one thing you could think about is how can I reduce the stickiness of my web? Okay, do you have any maybe practical advice for how we could reduce the, the stickiness? Like I have ideas in my head, but I wonder what, what you think that might be. It's showing meditation and like a lot of um, spiritual practices, not necessarily any spiritual practice in particular, but ones that, spiritual practices that take you towards stillness. Um, the spider is saying stillness can really start to de-stickify. <laughs> de-stickiness um, the web if there's something about being very still it's it's like that particular vibration that we're giving off becomes much more still and becomes much more aligned with what with our higher selves or who we really are yeah so it's showing any kind of practices um, that really help us become realigned with our higher selves, you know, something bigger than just our, our human selves down here. Okay, yeah, that's really interesting. Okay, I'm gonna take a second to look for questions. And if you're just joining us, if you have questions and you're on Facebook, go ahead and type them into the comments section. Or if you're on Zoom, click on the chat button on the bottom bar there and type your questions in there. All right, my little spider friend, what else would you like for us to know about you or any advice for us humans? <laughs> the spider is showing how there's, um, with its particular breed, or species, it's, um, it has some, oh gosh, what's the right word? Co-evolution with humans, it's showing, it's showing so, you know, in sort of the same way that maybe domestic dogs or domestic cats have this evolution 
with humans, the spider is showing its particular breed has a similar kind of thing. Like obviously we're not pets, we're not domestic, but there is something about the way that you build your houses and your homes showing how, um, it's kind of showing me this human timeline of, you know, so back in the day, you guys lived in straw huts or mud huts or caves or, or whatnot. And there's sort of been this evolution of the spider as um, our own domiciles have changed. Have, have you always been particularly fond of humans and their shelter structures? It does feel like that. It does feel like they've they're, they're part of their, one of the things they're really drawn to is the human structures and having their own nests and such in there. Is there a particular reason for that? Like, you know, why wouldn't you choose different, more natural structures or, or things like that? Human structures have lots of places to hide. Um, it's not the same with natural, um, con uh, construction's not the right word. Um, showing like caves, it, it's just, they don't have the same angles is what it's showing. It's not, it's not that we couldn't make um, our webs in a particular way according to the cave or whatever. It's just, um, it's actually showing there's something particular about how humans like to use the 90 degree angle in their construction projects. There's something that this spider is saying they are drawn to that angle. Um, so it's reminding me, um, I did some biogeometry classes many years ago. And a lot of what that they talk about in that is sacred geometry, how certain angles give off certain um, qualities of energy and it's interesting because the 90 degree angle is actually one of the ones that gives off energy that's not great for humans, uh, despite the fact that we use it all the time. So this, the spider is showing me that the 90 degree angle has some particular affinity with um, its, its makeup. And so like it feels good for it to be in a 90 degree angle. And, and that's one of the reasons that it follows humans. Huh. That's really, really interesting. Okay, I'm checking for questions here. Hmm. So we have a question. Why do you think that people are afraid of spiders and kill them instead of coexisting? Well, many of us are poisonous. Um, like there is there is this sort of understanding from the spider of why we might smash um, insects that are stinging or because he's saying there is some level of fear of assault. It, it, yeah, with a bite or a sting or something. So it isn't, yeah, it is a normal reaction. Like if something attacks you to um, smash it. So it's become this thing where it's almost like humans realize that some spiders are poisonous and some are not, but most humans just don't know how to tell the difference. And I'll, I'll admit, I'm definitely one of those. I don't always know how to tell which spiders are poisonous or not. And um, it's saying it, it just became easier for humans to assume all spiders are bad. Um, and there are, there are lots and lots and lots of us. Um, it's showing like, yes, it would be really great if people would, it's showing like, um, like a glass or some kind of container, like putting that over the spider and slipping a piece of paper underneath and, you know, taking it outside. That would certainly be preferable, but there's actually, the spider's like, I, I don't hold it against your husband that he smushed me when he came home. There's sort of a little bit of expectation that that's going to happen. And um, it's showing too, like humans aren't the only animal that, um, you know, it's showing like getting eaten by a bird and 
you know, humans aren't the only ones that are smashing spiders or, you know, not choosing to not coexist with them. And the spider's saying that's one of the reasons that when we breed, that there's such a huge number of us is there's some expectation that a good chunk of us will uh, die. And so, <clears throat> do, do you think, so this is, do you, you don't care if, if people smash you? Is that what you're saying? Well, it's not preferable, obviously. Um, so it's the spider. Now this picture was taken, I don't know, maybe about a month ago. And it's showing like, okay, I've already come in and like been through one more reincarnation cycle since I, I've last seen you. Like he's come in and been a spider again. And it, it's like, um, it's showing how like, especially in the insect world that the, the idea of the incarnation cycle is just so much easier and faster and smooth and it's, it's like coming up, going down, coming up, going down. It's much easier than being a human or some other kind of more complex uh, mammal. Like it just, it just happens. So we're not super concerned that, okay, is this you in particular not concerned or are you speaking for all spiders? For some, on some level, I'm speaking about all insects, the spider says, like we know that we're going to get smashed or again with having the high high number of reproduction um there it, it's it's a built-in kind of fail safe is what he's saying hmm. okay so i've got another question for you little spider am i making a mistake for the spider when i put them outside when i find them it says no no that's that's fine um saying i we're not going to guarantee that we're going to stay outside um, but like this particular spider, I don't know if you were with us, it, it was talking at the beginning a little bit about how this particular breed of spider really does prefer to be inside. So even if you take it outside, it's probably going to try to find another way to come back in. Uh, but it, it's much preferable, the spider says, for, for you to take the spider outside rather than smash it, even though we're kind of planning for that in the evolution of it. Okay, the spider is really quite matter of fact about um, spider populations and such. Um, yeah, he's saying yes, we would prefer to go outside than than to be smushed. So if you if you can take us outside, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. All right, so I'm gonna just take a little look here for any other questions we might have for the spider. Kind of coming to the end of our time here today. So my little spider friend, I wonder, is there anything else you want to be sure to share with our viewers about you or your view of the world, anything like that? So it's showing me that concept of the web again that we he was showing at the beginning where each of us individually we have our own webs we're attracting things in some things are a little more sticky um so the spider is really encouraging us to have some awareness of what kind of webs we're weaving and it's like bringing conscious awareness to what you're attracting into your life He's like, this is much more than like law of attraction or more woo woo, new agey kind of stuff. This really is like, um, if you have any kind of like a conscious awareness or you've done meditation or something, this might be something you're able to feel like just closing your eyes and, and kind of taking a look at what those things are in your life. Or maybe you don't need to close your eyes. He's showing like, maybe you need to draw out your web on a, piece of paper and like look at how all these things are connected but it's really encouraging us to look at the power of our own webs that we're weaving and what we're bringing into our lives and how we can and it's reminding that it said like finding ways to bring stillness into our lives can help reduce the stickiness of our webs and um, allowing things that maybe are really ready to be let go like the stickiness can just drop and it'll fall away 
Thank you so much, Spider Friend. It's been so wonderful to chat with you today. Let's see. So thank you, thank you to all of our viewers who joined us here today. These sessions are always so much fun for me to facilitate. Our animal friends have such fascinating stuff to share with us. And I think I've got at least six weeks more of this already lined up. The animals just keep showing up, which I'm, I'm just so excited to, to continue to chat with them and make these videos for you. So I hope you'll join us again sometime. And until next time, take care and be well.